Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Gervaitis, an obstetrician gynecologist in Newmarket, Ontario. Welcome back to my video series entitled Talking IUC with Dr. D, my YouTube channel devoted to answering questions about intrauterine contraception. In today's video, we're going to compare the IUD compared to permanent sterilization or permanent contraception options, uh, namely tubal ligation uh, and also vasectomy. The first topic that we'll address in terms of comparison is the failure rates. Now, when we look at the IUD compared to having your tubes tied or tubal ligation compared to vasectomy, which is the male sterilization procedure, each of these methods is generally equally effective. All of them have a chance of pregnancy in the range of one to 2%. With the IUD, the chance of pregnancy is about two to six or eight per thousand, depending on levonorgestrel versus copper IUD, um, which overall, so a less than 1% chance of pregnancy. Uh, vasectomy, the male sterilization procedure, uh, even slightly more effective at 0.15% um, chance of pregnancy, uh, but definitely a less than 1% chance of pregnancy. And tubal ligation, uh, which is a surgical female procedure, if um, that is performed, the chance of pregnancy is in the range of 1% to 2%, with some variation depending on precisely how the surgeon performs the uh, tubal. There are varying meth methods. Uh, but bottom line is that the IUD is equally effective uh, as uh, tubal ligation, as is vas vasectomy. So all of these options are sort of comparable in terms of uh, failure rates. The second topic I'd like to compare is the risks. Um, and this is a big one. Uh, in terms of looking at IUD insertion versus tubal ligation, we'll start there. Um, an IUD insertion is an office procedure that takes about five minutes and is very low risk. I will refer you to my previous videos uh, talking about the what are the overall risks of um, IUD insertion. I've addressed that earlier. Compared to tubal ligation is a completely different story in that it actually is a surgical procedure. And even though we're talking day surgery uh, and not quotes major surgery, um, it still involves a general anesthetic in the operating room. Um, because the uh, surgery does actually enter the abdominal cavity um, and uh, there is an actual recovery time, there may be post-operative recovery pain to, um, to deal with up to two weeks after the surgery. Um, and there are co potential complications related to the surgery. So when we do a tubal ligation, you have a general anesthetic. So there are uh, some small risks associated with general anesthesia, depending on your medical history and your health and whether or not you have other medical problems. Some patients might be at higher risk uh, in terms of anesthetic exposure compared to others. But there is the risks of general anesthesia to consider. Um, to perform the tubal ligation, an incision is made below the belly button and uh, through that incision, a needle is usually placed to um, puff up the tummy full of uh, carbon dioxide gas in order to uh, create a protective layer of, um, uh, basically a protective layer of gas between the abdominal wall and what lies beneath. And then we use what's called a trocar, which sort of is like a, a dagger for lack of a better word, but a sharp ended instrument that actually goes into um, that small incision below the belly button so that we can put the video camera through, look at the fallopian tubes, and then the surgeon would make another small incision lower down in the abdomen. Through that incision, uh, place an instrument to either place clips on the fallopian tubes or to cauterize or burn the fallopian tubes. Sometimes a ring is used, um, uh, to occlude the tubes uh, and also in recent years there's also been the technique of actually removing the entire um, fallopian tube ha has become more popular for other reasons that I won't get into uh, in the course of uh, this video um, in too much detail but just to say that there's some theoretical uh, potential benefit from an ovarian cancer prevention standpoint from actually removing the fallopian tube uh, but bottom line the surgery requires general anesthesia, 
sharp instruments, instruments into the abdomen so as to be able to put, place the video camera and then additional instruments uh, to actually block the fallopian tubes. With any surgery um, such as this, which um, we describe this general procedure as laparoscopy, um, there is a two to three per thousand chance of injuring the things that live near the uterus and the fallopian tubes. So bowel, blood vessels, uh, bladder, uh, the ureters which travel from the kidney to the bladder. It's very rare that any of those things would happen, but in some circumstances, if there was one of these complications, it might even necessitate actually um, converting the procedure to what we call an open procedure, an abdominal procedure, where we're not using the mini keyhole um, surgical approach that we're actually having to make a larger abdominal incision, uh, which would obviously have uh, a much greater recovery time. That's very, very rare, but I do always say to my patients that there's really not any such thing as, quotes, minor surgery, because any minor surgery due to complications could potentially uh, progress to a more major surgery uh, to deal with those complications. Um, but the bottom line to emphasize here is that this is surgery that we're talking about. And in general, uh, speaking in general terms in gynecology in the year 2019 and in modern day gynecology, our goal is generally to help patients avoid surgery whenever we can and to avoid surgery and avoid the risks of surgery. So keeping that in mind, generally speaking, we would consider uh, tying someone's tubes as almost a last resort in terms of contraception, um, that if a patient is gonna go through an entire separate surgical procedure, um, that we really have to weigh those risks carefully. And if there are other uh, equally effective and much less risky options, then we would want to explore those first before subjecting someone to the risks of surgery. I will say that many women will have their tubes tied uh, at the time of C-section. Um, that's a completely different sort of approach in terms of weighing risks and benefits because in that situation, the patient is already undergoing the surgery for the purposes of the C-section. Uh, the addition of the tubal ligation to that procedure doesn't overall increase her surgical risks or recovery time. So uh, that's probably one of the commonest scenarios uh, in which we are actually performing a tubal ligation uh, right now. And in most other instances, we're encouraging patients to explore other less invasive and less risky options that are equally effective. Now, looking at the risks of vasectomy as compared to uh, tubal ligation, uh, vasectomy is definitely considered a safer, less invasive procedure. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's equally effective as at preventing pregnancy. It's done just under local freezing. It does not require uh, general anesthesia, and so those risks are avoided. So if a couple is weighing uh, the option between tubal ligation versus vasectomy. Um, the position of the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada and also the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists is that definitely vasectomy is considered an overall safer option compared to tubal ligation. So if both um, members of the couple are willing to consider the procedure, definitely is considered safer and less invasive for the male partner to undergo a vasectomy. Uh, in terms of uh, the category of menstrual side effects and what effect will um, each of these options have on the uh, menstrual cycle, of course, vasectomy would have no effect, uh, but looking at uh, IUD versus tubal ligation, uh, keep in mind that if you choose a levonorgestrel IUD, so that would be uh, commonly in Canada, Marina or Kylina, uh, these options would potentially have the beneficial menstrual side effect of less heavy, less painful cycles in the majority of women. Uh, and in up to 20 to 30% of women, they might not actually even have a menstrual cycle uh, after insertion of a levonorgestrel IUD. The occlusion of the tubes does not affect uh, ovarian production of hormones at all and uh, thus has no effect on the menstrual lining. I will say that some patients have said to me after a tubal ligation, you know, my cycles are really different than they were before. They're much heavier. In those instances, it's usually because that patient was uh, either using a levonorgestrel IUD or the birth control pill previously and now no longer is, for example, taking the pill 
and that's the reason for the change in menstrual cycles not that the actual clipping of the tubes had any impact it's the absence of her taking the birth control pill uh, which was helping her menstrual bleeding um, that is the reason for the change in menses not the actual occlusion of the tube so when i'm talking to patients about pros and cons of iud versus uh, tubal ligation i definitely would be factoring in their menstrual history. Uh, if it's someone who has a tendency already towards heavier painful cycles, then definitely I would want them to consider some of the additional menstrual side effects and benefits of the levonorgestrel IUD. Um, I will say that the copper IUD does not have this beneficial effect of, as I've mentioned in previous videos and may or may not slightly increase uh, menstrual bleeding or cramping. Um, but definitely I want women to factor in menstrual bleeding when they're making their decision because the levonorgestrel can have a positive impact on that. Um, the next category I want to talk about or subject that I want to talk about is the idea of reversibility uh, or irreversibility in the case of um, tubal ligation and vasectomy. So the IUD is very, very effective for up to five years, uh, but at that uh, at any point in time during that five-year interval, if a patient has decided that um, she would like to proceed with a pregnancy, the IUD can be removed at any time. It does not need to stay in for the full five years. And basically that patient is able to conceive theoretically in the next month. There's no impact on future fertility. With regards to the uh, uh, tubal ligation procedure or vasectomy, we would consider these procedures permanent. So if a patient changes their mind after they've had the procedure, um, they're basically in a very difficult situation in terms of proceeding uh, with a pregnancy. Uh, in some situations, um, they have uh, been able to pursue procedures such as reversing the tubal or reversing the vasectomy, but I will tell you that these procedures are very expensive, very difficult to perform, and the chance of success is actually overall quite low. So if I have a patient who's asking me about tubal ligation and already has questions about uh, reversibility or being able to reverse a tubal, I automatically tell them, you know what, you need to be exploring other options. If you're already in your mind thinking, well, if I change my mind, we can undo this surgery, um, that is a sign that that patient is at a much higher risk of regretting the procedure uh, in the future. Uh, and regret, uh, for having had a, a tubal or uh, in the male partner case, vasectomy uh, is one of the highest risks of each of these procedures. Um, if And I ask my patients to really think very, very seriously if they're going to contemplate something as permanent and final as having their tubes tied. Uh, I ask them to contemplate, you know, awful things that we don't wanna have to think about, but no matter what happened to your current, um, no matter what happened to your uh, current children or if the patient's pregnant, no matter what happened to the future to this, uh, to this pregnancy or this child, no matter what happened to your husband, no matter what happened to your relationship, under no circumstances in the future would you ever want to be pregnant again. If the answer is a resounding yes, then that woman is at far lower risk of regretting the procedure. If there's hesitation and um, you know if there's any lingering doubt, then basically I encourage that patient to um, consider other non-permanent options um, that are equally effective, such as the IUD. And then um, the last thing I'll just mention that pertains to um, not only patients who've had their tubes tied or vasectomy or using an IUD, uh, also with regards to using uh, the birth control pill, basically just always a reminder that um, none of these methods prevent sexually transmitted infections. And so uh, for all patients who are with a new partner in the future, still very, very important for them to be using condoms uh, to uh, prevent STIs, uh, just a reminder of that. So those were some of the uh, major topics that I wanted to discuss uh, as it pertains to IUD versus uh, tubal ligation and vasectomy. Uh, I hope this video has been useful. Um, as always, uh, I'll mention that in the time that it took, or less than the time that it took for you to watch this video, you could have had an IUD inserted. The whole process takes about five minutes and provides five years of worry-free contraception. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you the next time. Take care.